Well, I thought I'd um, actually uh, show you the startup procedure, and hopefully nothing will go horribly wrong. Uh, I haven't had any problems for quite a while. Uh, originally, I was having some issues with it randomly freezing, which was particularly odd, but Linux distribution had uh, 3.2, which I think came out before the Ivy Bridge processors. Therefore, uh, you know, I didn't have any time for bug fixing or anything... Uh, whatever, and I wanted to kernel it with post, so I went into the Debian um, experimental repositories and got the uh, 3.4 trunk, and I have not had any problems since, so I'd be somewhat surprised if I were to have one now. Um, but I've got some other things I can try if it gives me problems. Uh, but yeah, one other thing I wanted to point out was what was in here, all the cables that are going in here, <laughs> you might want to actually know. Um, there's a power, uh, you probably saw that 3... Uh, uh, three jack power distribution thing and uh, one of those connects to the power cable that goes up into here uh, which connects to uh, the monitors uh, AC input uh, because it's not using like a power brick or anything in there it's actually just straight AC input um, and uh, then I've got a uh, you know BGN Wi-Fi adapter with the dual antenna, you know, one of those flat things uh, stuck into there. That actually came with a motherboard, and uh, so far it's been working pretty good. Um, and then, uh, then I have another bit of wiring in there that takes power off of the cable that goes to the monitor and, and uh, routes that to the speaker system. And then I had to do some... Uh, um, some grounding there to get rid of a nasty 60 hertz hum. Oh, so typical of cheap speakers. Um, uh, yeah, and then uh, the other two cables are the HDMI cable, which is plugged in right here. That's a right angle cable, so it just goes right up in there. Pretty nice. And then uh, I ended up doing a um, the 8th inch audio jack. Um, originally I was going to route the sound via HDMI, and though I could kind of get that to work, Pulse Audio was being dumb. Um, it has to do with kind of the philosophy that Paul, the guy that's writing Pulse Audio has, uh, making it imp uh, <laughs> very difficult without editing the source code to actually fix the dumb problem. Very frustrating, but this provides for a slightly more flexible um, system anyway, so I'm not too broken up about it, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's start her up. Big power button here. Monitor power. Speakers. Bio splash thing there. Grub. Gonna hit enter. Loading. <laughs> kind of harder to um, type a long password with one hand. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I'll have to take a check of the footage to make sure nothing's funny in there. Uh, yeah, so there it is. It's all booted. The longest part of the process is, of course, typing in that dumb password. Uh, but otherwise, it boots pretty quickly, given the fact that it is on uh, an SSD. And I actually have my file system split up between the SSD and the um, and uh, the hard drive. And it's just kind of a hard split. It's not uh, anything too sophisticated with dynamic stuff or anything like that. Though that would be pretty cool to try, perhaps, in a second version. Um, but basically... Uh, I have, I think it's temp, var, and my home folder, and the swap space all on the spinner drive, and then everything else is on the SSD, so that includes my operating system, my applications, etc., etc. Um, so all of those uh, tend to la launch quite quickly, uh, though you might notice a delay, so for instance, if I were to um, uh, 
uh, get Firefox up because I have a bunch of tabs open like all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see if I can maybe play some music or something, huh? So maybe you could hear some of the sound. Let's just hit something. Let's crank it up. High quality. <laughs> I don't know how good the microphone on this thing is. This camera, I'm borrowing it from my sister. People are making funny sig signals over here. But yeah, this is um, Linux Mint Debian Edition. is the operating system I'm currently using. Uh, with the... Uh, with the... Uh, Mate uh, desktop environment. And I very much prefer that one, as it's a much more, I don't know, direct, explicit, and straightforward one to actually customize, use, control, and uh, otherwise uh, use. Uh, I've grown accustomed to it. It was one of the very uh, most important defining factors in me transferring to Linux over from Windows uh, many years ago now. Uh, well, I don't know, it was a few years ago. But, uh, it was, uh, the GNOME 2 interface. I, I'm not too thrilled with GNOME 3. I did recently find out the secret the shortcuts to actually customizing the user interface in a, in a similar m manner to how you could do it with GNOME 3, but, or GNOME 2, rather, but yeah, that's so lame. Um, so right now, uh, because of my shortened uh, heat sink and the fact that Ivy Bridge is getting a little bit of a funny press for actually having, uh, but yeah, anyway, I don't want to <laughs> infringe on this guy's stuff. Uh, I like his music, that's why I was playing him. But anyway, uh, we'll just close that. Um, but yeah, I've got it customized with, uh, let's see if we can get in there without freaking out and being bad at focusing. Looks like it's being bad at focusing from what I can see, but yeah, I've got the system monitor up there. I've got all sorts of temperatures being monitored right here all the time. Non-invasive. Very nice. Um, I mean, the total with the two panels, you know, it provides me vastly superior information to say what you would find in, uh, you know, Unity side panel or in, um, Windows uh, 7's bar, which gives you basically no information at all about anything. It gives you funny little, you know, launcher icons like, like these, except for they're giant and don't have words, because, I don't know, it's like they're making the assumption that people can't read or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I really like the, the three uh, category applications, places, systems uh, menu also that's very good and this this kind of a traditional taskbar down here uh, makes it very easy for uh, people who have used computers in the past to actually continue to use computers so um, yeah uh, I like it it's been working pretty good I get better frame rates on uh, games uh, uh, including like Minecraft, as uh, what I've been playing mostly lately, um, on here with the integrated graphics than I was with my old laptop that had discrete uh, NVIDIA graphics. Now that's fairly outdated now, uh, so don't you know think that's too crazy. But uh, yeah, I really like the the open source driver uh, program that Intel's got going on. So even though I'd like to see more competition in the arena. I can't say that Intel's doing a bad job. Um, um, so yeah, uh, hopefully that pretty much shows uh, everything. Uh, you can probably hear those fans. That's kind of a nice feature, actually, if you're right-handed, uh, the way that the fans are right now. Of course, you can flip the fans over and have it blow out the other side, but if you're one of those sweaty hand people, put your hand right down here and <laughs> it blows right on it. <laughs> Not a problem. Some little vent holes on the top and the bottom for simple convection and cooling for the uh, components inside the uh, top portion. Um, but yeah, otherwise I think that's pretty much it.
Um, so thanks for watching. I thought uh, I had a lot of fun making this project. It was it was good to be, actually be able to feel like I can do another project again. And uh, um, I hope you like it. And uh, see you guys later. Bye.